As we continue our discussion on Lecture 1, Biology and Learning, we can now continue and talk about uh, what are known as the levels of learning. So we've recapped and talked about the brain and how it develops and how it forms synapses and connections to help promote learning and its plasticity. And then we even talked about workshop and what workshop's goals are to help promote that idea of the brain developing and being stronger. So now we can finally look at the levels of learning that you're going to be expected to achieve while you take Rutgers Biology. And a good way to understand the levels of learning, I think, is to look at an example. And the example that we want to look at is something that has many levels to it, which is diabetes. Diabetes is a very common, very widespread disorder, and it has many different components that we can look at. But what's interesting about it is that it covers so many different aspects of biology that it forces you as the student or as the biological researcher or as the medical doctor to look at this very interesting disease from a variety of different angles to figure out the best way to tackle it. And that's what you're going to be doing as a student in biology. You're going to be looking at different problems, different questions that are given to you at a variety of different angles to see which is the best way to tackle it. And let's talk about diabetes a little more and then apply that information to the way that it's going to work in this course. So diabetes has a couple of components. The first thing you want to do whenever you're looking at a disorder is look at what's normal. So let's look at the normal. As far as the normal is concerned, um, we have to look at homeostasis. Homeostasis is this idea of your body trying to keep everything stable. And once it's keeping everything stable, you would hope that in terms of diabetes, what happens? You have normal blood glucose levels. So this is normal. This is what you would want. But what's interesting and what we really care about is the abnormal. What is weird about diabetes? What is causing diabetes, all this harm to people? What does diabetes do that causes these sort of very bad outcomes? And the great thing about diabetes is that it forces the, the person who's studying it to look at it from those different angles. What do I mean by that? The abnormalities of diabetes are so widespread. We can look at, let's say, hormones. There's a, there's a possibility that there's a hormones um, and they're imbalanced, hormone imbalance. This is just one part of diabetes that could be problematic. And the hormone specifically would be insulin, and not just one, but even glucagon. Glucagon is another hormone that you'll learn about that could be off, could be imbalanced. Remember, homeostasis is the balance. It's the idea that everything stays stable. You could have hormone imbalance causing diabetes. What else can happen? You can also have problems in terms of metabolism. Metabolism of what? This right here, glucose. Metabolism of glucose might be problematic, and that might also be causing the abnormality associated with diabetes. What else could happen? You could also have what we call cell membrane dysfunction. The cell membrane is the outer portion of a cell that's in charge of, you know, getting things in and out of a cell, and it's very important. What can happen is, specifically, remember that insulin? There are also insulin receptors. And guess where they're located? They're located on the cell membrane. And if you have cell membrane dysfunction, you have insulin receptor dysfunction, then you have abnormality, then you have this idea of diabetes. So there's another possibility. Yet again, there's more abnormalities. You can even look at something like genetics. Genetics is often seen as abnormal in people with type 1 diabetes. You don't need to get into the details. Or we can even look at the environment causing this abnormality. Type 2 is often associated with environment. Type 2 is the diabetes that can develop if you have a bad diet for a long period of time, amongst many other things. Um, even more so, we can look at, let's say, organ function is another abnormality that's possible. Organ function. Organ function could also be problematic. You could look at the pancreas might be not functioning properly. Maybe even the nervous system entirely, the NS, or even the kidneys might be improperly functioning. So we can see that there's, what, one, two, three, four, five, six different abnormalities that could happen for one sort of disease here. And this is the interesting part of biology. You look at the abnormal to figure out how to get back to the normal. And look at how many things we have to look at. 
overall we can say that diabetes for a very simple term diabetes is complex very simply speaking it is a complex thing so you as a potential researcher as a potential biologist as a future doctor whatever you may be you have to look at the varying complexities and specifically there are varying complexities of learning just like there are varying complexities of diabetes there are varying complexities of learning what do I mean by this in Rutgers biology you're going to be looking at two types of questions what I call low-level or what they call low-level questions we'll just write cues and upper-level questions two types of questions, two types of complexities that you have to look at. Low level questions are either considered level one or level two. Upper level are considered level three or level four. Level one and two basically mean recall one or many facts. You're basically going to be asked what is learning or what is diabetes? What is the molecule associated with diabetic dysfunction? Those are basic recall questions that you have to remember, or you might have to remember many facts. What systems are involved in diabetes? Things like that. Those are low-level questions. You might be very used to those, especially in high school. These are often seen. But the upper-level questions are the questions that students often have difficulty with. These are the ones that are going to force you to comprehend. These are the ones that are going to force you to compare and contrast and uh, even categorize a lot of C words here. Cat, uh, how do you spell this? Garize, categorize. Uh, you're even going to be synthesizing information. All of these sort of complex things that involve lots of application of knowledge. Essentially, these upper level questions will force you to extend knowledge beyond just the facts. And this is where it becomes hard in biology, when you have to answer these types of questions. What we have to remember is that your exam will have them all. So the exam has them all. It has a variety of all of them. Um, it's not just recall anymore. It's not just high school anymore. Now you're going to be forced to apply information and extend your knowledge of information. So let's go back to our diabetes example. Think about it. You have to know not just that diabetes is a hormone imbalance as a medical professional, let's say. You don't have to just know that it's a problem with the metabolism of glucose. You have to know all of these things. Then you have to apply the information that you know about this so that you can figure out a way to get back to normal you're going to be doing the same thing in terms of the stuff that you learn this year in biology. You're going to have to know tons and tons of information and then you're going to be able you're going to have to be able to apply it so that you can either recall or so that you can comprehend or compare or contrast or categorize or synthesize or whatever. And this is the complexity of learning that biology at Rutgers is going to force upon you, but hopefully through my help and through the help of your professors and other resources, you'll be successful in achieving the levels of learning that are necessary in this course.